this. This is set A0033, aka Evil Macax Mac. It includes five minifigures, 893 pieces, and it will retail for $80 starting on January 1st, 2022. Now, let's take a look. The minifigures. The MK in this set is semi-new and feels surprisingly fresh. The wig and face prints are reused, but the torso and legs are not. And oh boy, I love this new MK outfit. The Monkey Kid team kept enough of the key elements in the design that it still feels like MK, but changed enough that it's unique. They kept MK's signature yellow jacket, but changed it up a bit. They added a bit more teal into his color scheme, and I think it works. They also added arm printing, which is awesome. They did keep MK's dual molded legs, but sadly took away sight leg printing. I guess we can't have it all. I do love the change in design. MK's outfit normally feels casual, but this gives me more of a sense he's on a quest. Accessory-wise, MK comes with his signature staff, and also a compass and the map with all the locations of the three fire rings. The May in the set also reuses the wig and face print from past sets, but gives her a new color scheme and suit design. The torso introduces a brand new Lego color, and I am in love with it. It's like this vault yellow. On camera, it seems a bit greenish, but it just gives May this very vibrant design. It moves her away from her iconic white and green color scheme. The printing shows this ancient yet futuristic suit of armor design with a dragon face predominantly across the chest. The teal colored legs continue the print with gold lining and a bit of white on the waist. And like most of the times when Lego prints whites on darker colors, it gets a bit faded. And that issue is present here, but not as bad as in other cases in my opinion. Accessory wise, Mei ditches her dragon sword and powers up with all the fire rings and becomes ultimate Mei. The fire rings are pretty much all the same. The only thing that changes is the color. They are all the new flame piece attached to a golden ring. For the first time ever, we get a minifigure Sandy. Why? The answer at the moment is unknown, but my best guess is that LEGO decided to scale down Sandy so they didn't always need to make builds for big figs and he could perfectly fit in group vehicles like the Galactic Explorer without having to make it enormous and more expensive. Printing wise, it's what you expect from Sandy. Teal head and torso, orange mohawk and beard. They also gave Sandy a waist bag with a cap print across the torso. And on the back, the back strap continues where he's carrying some bottles and a yarn ball, which is so Sandy and I adore this detail. His face print underneath the beard fits Sandy perfectly. And overall, this figure might look simple, but it's one of my favorite monkey kid figures so far. Sandy also comes with a smaller crescent staff and they downscaled it to a T. On the villain side, the set also includes a macaque clone named Rumble, which uses a recolored Monkey King wig in a black and red color scheme. Printing wise, I think he's awesome, but most people will say he sucks. He has no leg printing, which is sad, but across the torso he has this red cloudy design with the macaque logo across the chest, and that also continues through the back. I know this is not the best Monkey Kid figure in the world, but as an army type of character, I like him a ton. He also comes with this dual axe in a dark gunmetal gray as his accessory. It is time. Now, let's talk about my favorite figure of the wave and probably the reason most people will buy this set. It is for the completely new Macaque minifigure. He uses this new wig that accurately portrays Macaque's hair in this spiky manner. They also added his six ears from the novel. They recolored the Lego Movie 2 scarf in a dark red, and then the Sun Wukong cape in a dark red. The torso and legs are also brand new, and show us this new design that we will probably see in Season 3. I, I just, I don't really know how to describe it, other than it's mystical monkey armor. And the back is pretty much the same, just mystical monkey armor. The fig also has two new face prints that are fantastic. One is similar to last year's macaque, but the second one is brand new. Some people have said it's goofy, but I feel it's in character. The figure also includes a signature staff, which now opts for a black and trans purple design with spikes at the ends. It also has a new flame piece and trans purple attached to it, and I love how it looks. The builds. Before we dive into the mech, let's talk about the side build for a second. This is MK Staff as a cannon. We know MK Staff can grow into any size, so LEGO gave us this staff as a cannon. It rotates, can move up and down, it includes a new type of stud shooter in pearl gold, and the ends of the staff are also in pearl gold. It's, which is kind of odd since LEGO already made these in drum lake or gold, but it's probably just a production thing. It's not really an issue. Funny enough, the cannon has weapon storage, 
which doesn't make sense in the context of the world, but as a toy, I love the fact this has weapon storage. As a side build, I think it's great. I don't really think it was necessary for the set, but I appreciate the creativity. Now, I know most of the people are here for the mech, so let's talk about it. Off the bat, the mech doesn't have a cockpit. Macaque doesn't physically pilot the mech. So m some people will say it's not a mech. I'm one of those that, you know, this big, it's mechanical, it's a mech. I'm guessing there's going to be like some in-universe explanation why he doesn't pilot the mech. It's probably going to be like mystical monkey magic. And since the mech doesn't have a cockpit, it's very sturdy. Aesthetically, I adore the mech. The face is by far the biggest highlight for me. The way it's built blew me away. It's very reminiscent of the monkey mech, but it adapts macaque instead of Wukong. The color scheme of the mech is also a highlight for me. Black and red throughout, some yellow transferable metallic gray in there, but not too much. It stays consistent, and the asymmetry above the waist is just fantastic. I wasn't into it at first, but after building and playing around with it, it's fantastic. And in my opinion, what really sells the asymmetry are the arms. The right side feels powerful, it feels like a machine. One strike is gonna cause some damage. The left side feels skilled, it feels lightweight and quick. The way the Mac just shows personality through its design, I love it. Both arms internally are pretty much the same, like they're built literally the same, but what changes is the outside. And what matters to me is how it looks, and I really like how these arms look. Macaque's only accessory is the spike staff, and this thing is massive. I love the use of black and trans purple throughout. It also can attach on the back, which again, was not necessary, but I'm glad LEGO is giving us more weapon storage. Height-wise, the mech stands at about 11 inches tall. If we compare it to the monkey mech, the monkey mech completely towers over him by so much, it's kind of funny. And I don't mind this. The monkey mech feels much slower and powerful. And the macaque mech being much smaller feels agile and quicker. The best comparison I could find from a scale perspective is the fire steel mech from Ninjago. They're about the same height. Macaque mech is just a tad bit taller. Now, let's talk about articulation. For me, articulation is a make or break when it comes to mechs. Because I like my mechs to be poseable and look good. And in this mech... It's quite interesting because they innovate a ton in some areas, but they take steps backwards in others, like with the shoulder and hips. Normally on mechs at this size, hips are very bulky. And in the case of this mech, it's very thin. Lego introduces a brand new piece that takes this build and simplifies it and makes all of this into this. And so this mech can do this and it stays very thin. It's a game changer. Lego builders going forward are gonna be able to do things they couldn't do in the past. But where I say the mech took steps backwards is at the knees, elbows, and wrists. As you can see, the knees are 100% fixed. They just, they won't move. Thankfully, the ankles do have a little bit of articulation, but that's about it. I get the sense that the designer really focused on giving the mech the ability to stand up, since it is a very top-heavy mech. So if the knees don't generate enough friction, the mech would be falling down constantly. So I'm just, I'm guessing the designer played it safe and gave it fixed knees. Thankfully, they are fixed at about an angle of 150 degrees, and they're not fixed at 90. That would suck. So this mech is very stable. But now let's talk about elbows, wrists, and hands. Yes, hands. I just, I don't understand why they went with these type of elbows. I know they work, but they very much limit the mech's articulation. It doesn't bend the full 90 degrees. The wrist can swivel, and there is a mixel joint in there, so we can slide in the staff. And here's where my main issue with the set comes in. The hands just can't hold the staff properly. If you attach both hands to it, it, the pose just looks very stiff and motionless. And if you have one hand hold the staff, it can't hold the staff. There just isn't enough friction and the staff is too heavy. And gravity constantly pulls the staff down. And my second issue is that the hands don't hold the staff properly. These hands just don't generate the force to keep the staff in. And sometimes when you're carrying this around or you're putting it in poses, the staff tends to fall off and the hands also tend to break. If the mech was bigger, I probably could overlook a couple of those issues, like with the monkey mech, but that mech is so big, you kind of understand why they had to do that. 
but I've seen mechs at this size have really good articulation, and so I was disappointed when I wasn't able to make a mech this cool stay in any pose that doesn't feel lifeless and stiff. Value The set will retail for $80 and it includes 893 pieces. And here is where the conversation starts. If we value price per piece, there is no issue with the set. The price per piece in the set is 8.9, which is good. But my problem is that I just don't see it. The mech uses a lot of small pieces, which brings the piece count up, but it doesn't bring the size up. And yes, I'm sure all the new molds, side printing and side leg printing are expensive. But still, I just, I don't physically see the $80 on here. I know it's there on paper, but when I finished building this mech, I thought, oh, this is a pretty good $60, $70 set. But $80 seems a bit much. And I wasn't going to make this argument because I saw a lot of people say, like when this set was revealed, that it had great value. But then I looked at the European price. And over in Europe, it's going to be 60 euros. And then I proceeded to convert 60 euros into dollars. And it's $67. And that just proves my point. This mech should have retailed for $70. If we compare this to other $70 sets, they seem about right. Conclusion The Evil Macaque mech is not a bad set. I'm sure lots of Monkey Kid fans are going to crave this set. I've already seen people say it's the best set out of the wave. Mech builders are going to love those new ratchet joint pieces, but at the end of the day, it's bittersweet for me. The lack of bendable knees and awkward arm articulation is annoying. It doesn't break the set because I know they can be fixed, but I'd rather not have to fix them myself. With all that said, I like this set a lot. If you're a Macaque fan, this is a must. The Mii Fury selection is fair. The new Macaque figure is a selling point, but everything else included makes this such a good deal. Lastly, I have to say, if you can get this somehow for $70 or $60, or the equivalent to that, I think it's worth it even more. But hey, that's just my break opinion. So tell me what you think about the set in the comments down below, and check out our other LEGO reviews. And don't forget to subscribe to the Masters of Brigitte's YouTube channel for more Ninjago and Monkey Kid reviews. See you guys next time. Take care.